Rebel Moon is a two-part film released between 2023 and 2024 and is directed by Zack Snyder and stars Sofia Botella, Michael Hussman, and Ed Screen and follows a disgraced soldier who must search the galaxy for warriors to defend a small village from an invasion from the forces of the mother world. Guys, I am finally here to talk about Rebel Moon, a brand new film, sort of. The director's cuts recently came out, so I thought I might as well finally talk about this entire two-part film, both the theatrical cuts and the director's cuts. Now, I will start off by saying that Zack Snyder is a filmmaker that I do have a lot of respect for, and when I talk about this movie, you might think that I just don't care for him at all, and that is completely not true. In fact, I just admire the guy, especially when it comes to his visuals. He is such a great visual storyteller, and I think why he started out in the first place making a ton of comic book adaptations from 300 to um, Watchmen to Man of Steel and Justice League, Batman vs. Superman. He just is really good at taking a comic book panel and adapting that. And his style, even when he's not fully adapting a comic book, it feels so personal, so intimate. Like every shot is planned out perfectly. And I think he is great at that. And I think this film also shows that he has a really good eye for visuals. I'm a huge fan of his Watchmen movie, which I think is his best film to date. I don't think he understands Watchmen, but I think he understands the importance of the visual medium of film. And that has always been his strongest suit. The stuff that he is rather weak on is when he delves into actual character work and telling a compelling story. That is where things get a little bit weaker and where Rebel Moon in particular really falters. Now, I was not a huge fan of his short stint at DC. Man of Steel was kind of the movie that I needed it to be when I was, you know, young. But as I've gotten older, I still like the film, but it's definitely not something I need anymore. Batman vs. Superman is a cluttered mess of a film with beautiful visuals and great ideas that are just squandered by some ideas that I don't really care for. And then I think Zack Snyder's Justice League is a film where he took all the criticisms of his previous two DC films and fixed that movie. I just don't know if it needed to be four hours. And now I haven't watched um, Army of the Dead, but here we are with Rebel Moon. And I was intrigued by this film because I love a good space epic. I love space operas. I love the Star Wars franchise, and I loved the idea of getting a brand new world with a very unique voice, and I was, you know, I was kind of skeptical of these films, but I was cautiously optimistic about them. I at least wanted to explore a brand new world with his visual storytelling, because I knew he would make something grand. And he did do exactly that. And with his new deal at Netflix, I knew that, oh man, he can make the movie that he wanted to make from the start. Because with Netflix, they pretty much allow you to do what you want. Or at least that has been the case for a lot of the more prestigious filmmakers that have joined that platform. But when it came to Rebel Moon, I think Netflix wanted to market this film, this two-part film, into a um, experience that could be, you know, watched by teens. And I think they were thinking of its marketability. 
And so because of that, we have two distinct cuts of the film. One that cuts down the film to a PG-13 rating, and then another that expands the film into what Zack Snyder wanted it to be from the very beginning. And so you kind of get a film that's a little bit compromised in its theatrical cut, but is finally fixed in that director's cut. And I will be talking about both cuts, but first I want to go into the theatrical cuts overall. And I have to say that, <laughs> yeah, critics and audiences for the most part are very correct with um, both of these films. It just doesn't work all that well. Um, the problem, and the biggest problem for me is that Rebel Moon is just an extremely dull experience from incredibly flat characters that lack any kind of depth at all. And what is there is just not enough for me to really care. There's nothing to really grab on to some of these characters and they end up falling very flat. The only thing about them, in my opinion, is that they're just cool. Everybody has this cool factor to them where like they have this cool design, they have this cool look, um, they have this cool backstory or they're kind of shady or you know they they build them up to be this epic character but I feel like you don't really see that in the film. The only stuff that you really get with any kind of meat to it is Sophia Batella's character, Cora, who was this um, fighter for the Imperium. And she did this really dark deed that led her to go into exile. And Sophia Batella, I think, for what she is given, is pretty solid in the film overall. And I think also Ed Screen as the villain is fantastic. I love a good villain that can go over the top, but also isn't going into just incredibly silly territory, which is what we got with, say, something like Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Here, Ed Screen really dials it back and is a nasty son of a bitch. Uh, I really loved watching his performance in this film of just being a villain that likes to be evil. And I got to appreciate that a little bit. But the rest of the film, uh, both films, is just very, very dull. Um, the visual storytelling, for the most part, is pretty okay. Um, I don't think Zack Snyder should be his own DP because I think he's good with specific visuals but when he is filming it all on his own, I think it lacks some flair to the camera work, um, which was a little disappointing. This film isn't as visually stunning as a lot of his other work that's been done by people like Larry Fong, who has been his DP in quite a few of his films. But also, something I do like about both of these parts is I like the world. I would love to explore more of this world because there's something about it that is intriguing. It has an interesting lore. It has an interesting backstory and it gives such life to the costuming, to the worlds, to the alien races. Um, there's something about it that is very Greco-Roman influenced and Snyder is a really big fan of that kind of imagery, especially with, you know, having movies such as 300, which deal with the Spartans, or having the Justice League films that he made basically be like Greek myths, seeing those characters as gods. And I think here... He kind of delves more into that than he ever has before. And it's intriguing, but not always compelling. And I have to say that the first part in particular suffers the most from all the problems that I've already discussed. It's just really flat 
to watch. Um, it's very boring at times, and the structure of it really fails to compel you to continue watching. It's a lot of going from place to place to place um, with a climax at the end that is your midpoint in this story, and it just doesn't feel very earned. And all of the characters just, they get time to shine in their introductory scenes, and then they're just kind of left there. But then the second part of the film does expand on them, which it feels a little too late at that point. You get them into the village to defend it, and then I think the film really picks up. I think the structure starts working. I think some of the character play, not necessarily that these are great characters, but the character play between them is really pretty solid and camaraderie and it's fun. And I think the action is actually more improved in that second part. I know a lot of critics really hated on the second part, and I think a lot of that comes down to that the first part wasn't very well liked, and then at that point, nobody really cared about the second part. And I think the second part is an improvement. And when I got to the final moments of the film, I was interested enough in seeing a continuation of this world if it ever comes. Now I want to get into the director's cuts of these films, which are a whole different ballpark. Now I want to say as soon as I started part one of the director's cut, the first 20 minutes I was really shocked because I thought the first 20 minutes of this movie was absolutely fantastic. And I thought I was in for a treat. I thought I was going to finally love this movie because it deals with a minor character that was in the theatrical cuts and introduces him and introduces the villain in a much more sinister way. And it's compelling compelling, it's thrilling, and actually really heartbreaking. And the filmmaking on display, it just made the whole sequence so compelling. That is a fantastic opening, and I hoped that the rest of the film would follow suit. In fact, for a second, it was, because one of the problems in the theatrical cuts was the inclusion of this narration by Anthony Hopkins' character that kind of just spelled out a lot of the backstory for the film that you didn't really need. You could just watch the film and hopefully understand that. And then also, part two um, would tell you the events that happened in the previous part in case you missed some things, which was kind of really annoying, especially watching these back to back. But that was not present in either director's cut, and it was all the better for it. And then we finally get into the meat of the rest of the film, where the majority of the scenes are not new additions. They kind of are just extensions of what we had seen before, and there's more violence because it's now got that R rating, and it's got more sex, and that's basically it. It's just an expansion of all the problems that I already had with the previous versions of this film. Just now it's a whole lot longer. The movies become, instead of two hours each, they become three and a half hours and then three hours, and ultimately I don't think that this story needed to be told in nearly seven hours. I just don't think that that was necessary. This is a story that is influenced by Seven Samurai, and that was able to tell its story in three and a half hours. And I could see this story working in a three and a half hour runtime, but I think that Snyder gets so carried away with the amount of characters that he's working on, the world building, and this idea that everything has to be so important and just every little detail needs to be there. And I 
don't think that's the case. It's the same problem that I had with Zack Snyder's Justice League. I really enjoy that movie, but I think it could have been cut down to three hours at the least, because I think that four hour runtime just kind of squanders the film a bit. And I think the same happens here with Rebel Moon. There are inspiring moments throughout both parts. In particular, there is a scene that was apparently originally devised for um, a 300 sequel that would focus on Alexander the Great, where he tames the horse Bucephalus. And that is reintroduced into this film with this character trying to escape slavery and he has to tame a griffin. And I think that moment is beautifully filmed and intimate. It's just a shame that the character <laughs> that it's focusing on is incredibly boring. There's great things in Rebel Moon, but it's squandered by a runtime that is over bloated, um, characters that are just falling kind of flat. The visuals are good at points and kind of bland at others, and it's just not a film that really engaged me with any of its characters. And by the time I got to the end of Rebel Moon Part 2, the director's cut, I was kind of done with this franchise. I wanted to see more of this world. This world is intriguing. But by the end of it, I just didn't care. And that was really disappointing for me. So anyway, with all that said, I'm going to give the theatrical cuts of Rebel Moon a 5 out of 10 and a 6 out of 10. As for the director's cuts, it's pretty much the same. I'm going to give them both a 5 and a 6 out of 10. Um, yeah, pretty much anything that it improved in the director's cuts was soon squandered by the pacing or just the lack of empathetic characters, or just, you know, an over-bloated runtime. It just squandered everything that it was doing right, and that was really disappointing for me. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hate that I didn't really care for these films that much. But there are fans out there, and I'm glad there are. But as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And stay positive.